Travelling through parts of the Free State and northern KwaZulu-Natal, you may come across groups of Amur falcons resting on the telephone wires. It is hard to believe that these small raptors come all the way from Mongolia, northern China and southeast Siberia. Their arrival in South Africa marks the completion of an incredible journey. It all starts in October each year, when they leave their breeding grounds to escape the harsh winter conditions. Their first stop is Nagaland in northeast India. Here they will spend a few days to prepare themselves for their long flight to South Africa. The Doyang Lake provides the ideal stopover for them to build up their fat reserves needed for the next stage of their journey. With all these falcons gathered here, scientists took the opportunity to catch some of them and attach small transmitters on their backs. This enabled them to map out their migration route accurately. And for the first time they established that falcons flew from Nagaland to Somalia, crossing the whole of India and the Arabian Sea without stopping for five days and ten hours, covering a distance of 5,600 kilometers. In 2012, a near disaster struck the falcons as the local population discovered a new source of income. Catching falcons and selling them for meat. They used fishing nets strung up high above the trees and as the birds came into roost, they became entangled in the nets. The hunters would take the birds out the next morning. They broke their wings to keep them alive and kept them in pens made from mosquito netting until they were sold. They charged less than four rand for each falcon and it was estimated that 15,000 falcons were killed each day, almost a quarter of a million during the migration period. Obviously, there was a huge outcry about all of this, and the Indian government stepped in and stopped all hunting. Nets were confiscated, and offenders threatened with jail sentences. The Doyang Lake has since been developed as an eco-tourism spot, a paradise for bird watchers who, at the right time of the year, will be able to see a million birds in 30 minutes. But back to the falcons and their migration route. Of course, once they reach Somalia, their flight to South Africa provides no problems and they usually start arriving in November. There are several roosts here where the Amir falcons come to sleep every night. We have them at Moy River, Ladysmith and in Heidelberg, Gauteng, but the largest roost is in Newcastle. Situated on the side of a very busy main road, it has been used for several years. It is also the only place where the falcons are caught and ringed. Rena Pretorius is the driving force behind the ringing operation. An experienced ringer for many years, having ringed more than a thousand barn swallows and other birds, she started specialising on Amur falcons some years ago. Sometimes she comes alone and other times she has friends to help her. Rena has also helped various scientists and ornithologists obtaining blood samples or parasites of the falcons or with the fitting of transmitters for the study of their migration route. Silver Francis has worked with Rena on this ringing project since it started. Her main interest in wildlife is rehabilitation. She runs a small rehabilitation centre from home and people from all over bring injured birds and animals to her to be treated and released back into the wild. She will only treat animals that stand a good chance to be released successfully. The problem here was to get the nets up in line with the tops of the trees, but with the help of Eskom and the local municipality, Rena and members of BirdLife Northern Natal came up with a plan to snatch the falcons from the air. Using long poles and a pulley system, they can hoist the nets 10 metres into the air and place them in between the trees. Once the nets are up, the arrival of the falcons is eagerly awaited. Soon after the sun has gone down, small groups start to gather. It won't be long before the first lot will arrive at the roost. And here they are. Okay, okay. Oh. 
As soon as the falcon gets caught, the net is lowered to avoid unnecessary stress to the bird. Experienced hands carefully disentangle it and soon it is ready to be ringed. Every falcon caught is weighed and careful measurements taken before it is ringed and released. Note that Rena Pretorius is using a different method of ringing and measuring. A Pringle chips container is the ideal size for an ammo falcon, and with suitable openings for the wings and feet, it makes ringing and measuring easy and with minimal stress to the bird. Rena was shown this method by an Hungarian team that visited here some years ago. She has been using this method ever since. You see there's a nail right all over underneath and black. The juveniles, you'll, did you see on that other one it had the markings, the juveniles? With every ammo falcon released goes the wish that someday it may be recovered so that more can be learned about these amazing birds and the incredible journey that brings them to South Africa year after year.